guys it is Dom from Sands for here just had a wonderful chat with Tom Hudson from Pulled Apart by Horses uh, to talk about the visceral energy that they put into their live shows uh, new material uh, just yeah touring and uh, just catching up really I, I've, I've always been a fan of Pulled, Pulled Apart by Horses I've known Tom uh, for a few years uh, after following the band and it was just good to catch up with him uh, sound dude uh, we talked about the music industry and kind of things he's learnt uh, changes in the band lineup, all that good stuff. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, whether you're a fan of the band or not, uh, please do check out Pull the Papa Horses. Please uh, go and buy uh, the new stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Yeah. How 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 are you feeling being back? How's it been back on tour and back in the sort of consciousness of the of the rock universe, which sounds a bit <laughs> vague, but yeah. Um. It's it's great, yeah. It's really it's really good. Um, I was pretty apprehensive, probably like well, this time last year, I'd have just been like, "What are we doing? What's the future <laughs> of music? Yeah, can we still perform?" Or do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. and I've I've spoken to a few artists, and you just get so used to like playing shows, even if you're not on tour, you like playing one offs here and there, or festival still, or or you're writing together or whatever, there's always something going on. So yeah. to have like such a big gap, uh, you, you start sort of questioning things and losing confidence in stuff. So it's yeah, just man. nice getting back out there. Do you know what I mean? Even not even playing shows, just going to a show in general and being stood in close yeah. vicinity to a bunch of people and like feeling that atmosphere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good vibe, and obviously, I guess, I guess you kind of always pride yourselves on. It's a very kind of visceral live show, and every time I've seen you guys, like it's been like proper raw, and there's a real good energy about it. Like it must be nice to get yeah. sweaty with people again. I guess. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's something, there's there's something like magical about like a collective crowd. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the the energy. Without without sounding too hippy dippy bullshit, but the energy <laughs> transcends, doesn't it? Like you, yeah. there is like something in the uh, in the room, a presence with you. Yeah, man. Nah, I love it. I love it. And obviously, you've got the new record coming out. Well, it's out now, and and I think it'd be nice to ask you about. Obviously, you're on tour promoting that now, but how was it pulling that together? Reality checks and and again and I guess getting you know having such a positive positive feedback to your return and, and everything like that it must be must feel good i don't i don't want to put words in your mouth but like it's you know certainly for as a as a listener it's kick ass to see you guys back again and touring and yeah. putting out music and things like that yeah um i mean it's great that it's finally out yeah. but um it's been like a while like since we've actually recorded it and stuff mm. Um, which has been like an endurance test in itself because um, we we did like a tour around like the UK, but like random places and basically played every track off reality checks, like new um, with like a, like a lineup change. Well, in, in yeah. terms of like, I wasn't playing guitar. I was like singing, just focusing on like front in, the yeah. band rather than like playing guitar as well yeah and making that decision to like change stuff up and like just want to like kind of evolve or try some out you know yeah just just so it's not just like the same old band rehashing the same stuff we're like you know let's mix it up a bit yeah. um but we we did a tour like uh end of 2019 um and like played played all the new songs in, got them like proper tour tight. Then like two weeks when we got back off tour, we went into the nave in Leeds yeah. and laid it all down live, just like capture that essence that like normally you end up um you end up writing an album, recording it and touring. And then when you get back off that tour, you're like, if we went in to record the album now, it'd be way better, be way yeah. tighter. Or like you, you know, you figure little extra things out, or stuff just happens when you're like in a live capacity. Yeah. So we were like, well, let's try that. Let's let it grow and evolve in a live situation, and then capture it after. Yeah, man. So, so the whole essence of the album is these songs, but 
live that live connection between us playing and just being in the moment and having that like rawness so when all like the um lockdown stuff happened with like covid we were just like it seems daft us releasing a live album that's meant to be heard live in a live capacity when we can't do that yeah yeah so yeah like that was a bit of a long-winded sort of way of saying yeah. that we just sort of had to like slip it on a little shelf for a bit and just be like when it's when it's time we'll sort of know yeah you'll bring you'll bring it bring it out yeah man i mean that, that i was going to ask about that obviously you've been through i think the first time we did an interview uh it was like way back like years ago i think lee was still in the band and i, I kind of wanted... welly? yeah it was the welly club yeah yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, I, and I remember, like, obviously, that was a wicked show, but you've been through quite a lot of iterations, you know, that things have changed, things have developed, and, and obviously you're still at the core. And I, and I wanted to ask you your perception of, has the mission statement of the band changed with everything that's happened? Has the vibe, um, obviously the, the lineup has changed, but in, in terms of what you want to achieve with Pulled Apart by Horses, has that changed and developed as the band has changed and developed, I guess? Um, I think it has just like in an evolutionary way, but, um, the same, we've always had the same ethos at heart, which mm. is like, give it your all. And like, you know, when we're, when we're playing shows, like the energy has to, well, it doesn't have to be there, but it is there. And it's like, it doesn't matter whether it's like 10 people or a thousand people or whatever, we're there we've traveled to play that show and we're there to do what we do and also it's like a cathartic release for us yeah. as well not yeah. just like people that are watching us play it's like we need to do that as well like i need to do that yeah um so i guess that's been like the uh the route throughout it all like from you know lineup changes to whatever and also it's just like the um just about being together as well like as a band like we you know we're sort of mates and um almost brothers like yeah uh before the music yeah that like whether it's love or hate it's like we're just there it's like yeah. we're we're embedded into each other's lives so that's kind of a big part of the band as well and like where we've had changes here and there, we've made sure that like whatever happens, there's, that there's that sort of connection still because yeah. it's really important for us. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting point you make, and that that connection, you know, you 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 kind of always stuck together, and you've gone, you've done shows like, you know, I remember. Uh, one of my favorite times I saw you was at the uh, what's the venue called, the Kitchen in Leeds. Um, just pizza on the pizza on the top floor, and it's like a venue as well. But Belgrade, um, Belgrade right. there you go. Yeah, I, I I remember like um, it was it was rammed and it was buzzing, and, and it was the Welly Club was rammed and buzzing as well. And it kind of made me think: has your definition of of success changed as the band has has developed as well? Like, what? How do you define success? Because you've done, you've recorded all over the place, you've played a lot of different countries and things like that you know, which some bands never get to do. Has your definition of success changed um, over time? And I guess, what is it? I guess the most straightforward way to ask that is, what is your definition of success? Um, well, yeah, that's it. That's a really interesting question because everyone gauges it differently, don't they? Mm -hmm. So, like, I can, I can sort of answer it on my behalf but yeah maybe yeah. i can't for like the other lads no, as much no. as it might be like different between each you know from person yeah. to person but for me i mean i think one healthy thing with the band was that like we never set out to be big or right. to really we didn't even have like any expectations other than like us guys entertaining ourselves and playing some shows and so like I think because we went into it like that, then we've mm -hmm. sort of, that's kept us rooted throughout it. Yeah. Because, you know, if it all, I've always thought if it all ends tomorrow, then I, I want to be 
I want to have made the most of like everything that we're doing and be like grateful for it. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, just sort of being present with it and enjoying each moment. And I think as a band, like, especially around like 2011, 12, after like the first album and the second album, there was like a, a lot of hype and we got, yeah, we were doing some ridiculous stuff. We we're touring, you know, we were, on, we were on the road, we were playing gigs yeah. more than we were in our own houses with our own partners and families and whatever. Yeah. Um, and we've done some insane stuff, but like the trajectory of it is like around, There's a there was a certain point where we were like on the top. Like yeah. we didn't realize at the time, but looking back, like we were bigger at one point. Right. But you don't you you don't really realize that because there's so much stuff going on it's so intense you yeah. you're so busy that you don't really savor that moment you only really realize in reflection yeah and i guess what i'm saying now is that like i'm kind of like a bit older and wiser and kind of now i know what i appreciate and you know whenever we're playing a festival in some like somewhere in europe or wherever like I'm yeah. just like, yeah, I need to just sit back and we're here. This is like a good moment and appreciate it. Yeah. No, I like I that, man. Yeah. And, and in terms of success, like for me, it's just still being able to, uh, yeah, to get out there and play to people. Like we haven't seen, um, we haven't seen like tons of money. And do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, we're like still a bunch of hobos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um but I guess the success is the fact that we've our daft band has given us a vehicle to like travel and meet so many different people and share <laughs> our art and our enjoyment yeah. with other people and yeah. connect. That's buzzing, man. I, again, it's real good to hear you sort of think that stuff through and thank you for, for sort of taking the time to, to sort of reflect on it with me. Um, in terms of, I guess, going back to another question that only you can answer, really, not really the other members of the band, but if you look back at where you were with that self-titled record, you know, you know, early, just just that, that time, I know it's going to seem like a world away now, but if you look back at who you were then, versus who you are now you mentioned you know being able to live in the moment a bit more what else have you learned about yourself how would you say you've changed and developed as a as a performer but also as a person through that time from then to now um i guess i guess i've kind of learned through learned the hard way uh through like various like struggles with like record labels and management and yeah definitely seen like a bit of a a bit of a sort of nastier side or like like a you know toxic side of the uh, music industry right yeah where like when you're kind of like young and like excitable you don't you don't really realize um and like so i think now like i'm just a little bit more not apprehensive but i've just got my wits about me a little bit more yeah. And one one major thing is like trust in your gut instinct, right. like as well, which we've always tried to do, but then it gets quite hard to navigate it sometimes because you lose your, you yeah. know, you sort of like in a compass a little bit because there's so much going on or so many people. So it's like, yeah, I think like knowing, knowing myself more and being more comfortable to sort of say what I want to do rather than what people want you to do, if yeah. you get me. Yeah, no, I, I do understand that. And I think because... You... Oh, go on, go on, yeah. And I was going to say in, in terms of like performance, uh, not much has changed because it's me tapping into my weird, naive, like, you know, it's like the inner, inner child, really. Yeah. To just... <laughs> yeah. To just be a fucking idiot for 40 minutes, an hour, whatever, yeah. and then leave it on the stage. <laughs> yeah, I like that, man. The primal energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good. I've always, I've always loved that about your band. And I think one of the things I do want to ask is like, 
you know, because you a lot of the times, you know, I've seen you play with younger bands and, and bands that are coming up, and there's a lot of bands that that I'm around that, that reference you as an influence, the the band and, and things like that. And I guess we're we're definitely a band's band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you mentioned you know trusting your gut instinct there, and I think there's a lot of realities that perhaps in the knowledge you've come into through dealing with those labels, through realizing that toxic part of the industry that, that you, well, there's some knowledge there so can you give me an example of where trusting your gut has steered you in the right way so in case anybody's listening to this or, or reading about it rather who um who you know maybe take some they could take some notes you know an example of when you've trusted your gut instinct as a band and it's worked in your favor when perhaps you know other people wanted you to go in a different direction i think it'd be like just in terms of like songwriting and track listing and stuff yeah. like that, like you end up having like a lot of conversations and you end up getting confused and going around in circles and stuff. Yeah. And then you need to kind of have a word with yourself and go like, what do I actually like rather than what's the catchiest, what's going to like potentially get to radio or all these different like variables that people are thinking of. Whereas, like in reality, some of the um, some of the stuff that we've just done without thinking and just gone like, "Oh, we like this," has actually like been the best option. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like our original gut feeling about something, like whether it's like a song that we want to release first, or even when it comes to like picking what goes on an album and what's going to be B sides or whatever, like wherever I've got a gut instinct for something it's and gone with it it's paid off where there's still some stuff where I kind of might cringe a little bit or I'm just like ah oh, man I should have listened to myself with that but you know yeah you've got yeah. to make those mistakes to, to sort of learn like as well yeah yeah it's, it's, but, it's yeah carry on but yeah I guess like and and like um and just with like tours and like support bands and and stuff like that, there's been things in 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 the past where maybe there's like a a particular band that we really like, yeah. but they might not have like a big following, but we're like, well, we want to watch them every night, <laughs> or or we we want to like take them out so people can actually yeah. like check them out, but then maybe they don't fit into the industry in the same way or they don't tick all the boxes or, mm. do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. Because the, yeah. there's a lot of backhanded sort of uh, little deals going on here and there. So it's, you kind of have to like stand up against it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But when you do, it does pay off. Like, yeah, definitely yeah. pays off. Yeah. I, that, I mean, is that something you would say then as a reality of the music industry from your perspective? Um, and the perspective of, of your experience in the band. Um, is that something you would say as a lesson about the music industry, if you were imparting knowledge to any of these bands that are looking up to you and looking up to Pulled Apart by Horses and watching you at these, you know, club shows that you're doing now? What is, well, sorry, I'll refine that question. What is one reality of the music industry you wish you knew when you were starting out that you know now that you would maybe impart on any young band? Um, one massive thing for me is like, there was stuff in the past where like decisions had been made for us in terms of, and like we, we had so much going on and we were like yeah. quite young and stuff that you don't really know where there was like certain people, like bridges that might've been burnt, right. like not by us, but by like people working for us or like management or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and I remember like, because I'm quite like um, quite sensitive, so I like worry about stuff a lot. Yeah. And I'd, whereas, like some people in the industry are a lot more like cutthroat and just like bully their way through a little yeah. bit or whatever, or they don't take it on the chin too much. Where I, I'd like definitely like feel uh, feel quite bad for like how some of our relationships have ended up. Yeah, and I remember like someone saying to me once, they're like, "You're the band, you're the boss. These people wouldn't have jobs, or there wouldn't be anything there if it weren't for you creating your music and doing it." Interesting, yeah, yeah. So you you need to take confidence in in the fact that like 
if you said no to something, you've got the power to say no to it because they can't fucking make force you to like go yeah. up on stage and play a gig you don't want to. Well, I mean they could do, but <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of sticking to your guns again, going back trusting that gut feeling. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. Which also means, like, when we've kind of learned that over time, we've probably been more of a pain in the ass because we're just, like, challenging stuff. But, like, I think it's healthy to challenge stuff because yeah. especially... I think now things are a little bit better because people are, like, a lot more open about, like, mental health. Yeah. And especially, like, in a creative sense, a lot of creatives struggle with their mental health because they're sensitive individuals they're, they're yeah. absorbing so much so like some of the smaller things can have like a big impact on them and especially yeah. like it's pretty unhealthy touring having getting given a load of booze every night yeah <laughs> and you know and a weird window to like grab food where there's normally just like shitty takeaways that are open and do you know what i mean it is unhealthy i, I, I do it's yeah it's survival modes and if you're doing that like a lot, it's really easy to just sort of lose your way. And it's, do you know what I mean? And I do. Yeah. You need, it needs to be like made more aware of that sort of side of things. And I think it is now, it is definitely getting better from when we started out. Yeah. But um, it's something that needs to be talk, talked about, isn't it? Because it's like, how many other jobs do you get where you just get given like, fucking stacks of beers and <laughs> to do your job and, then, yeah. and you just like left to it like told to go get a takeaway yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, go and get this like kebab from around the corner and yeah and there's this perception in there yeah there's this perception that it's like a really cool lifestyle and it is for the 20 30 40 minutes you're on stage but the rest of yeah. it's just like weird <laughs> yeah. a lot of waiting around in in smelly dark venues <laughs> yeah, man. hearing kick drums repeatedly and like do you know what i mean like sound check yeah man Good yeah time. like when when some of my mates that aren't musicians that like, they'll come and see the gig and they're like fuck this is amazing or whatever yeah. and i was like yeah you get here at like two in the afternoon and uh just listen to like us play one note over, over and over and over. again <laughs> in sound check or yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, or, I, just wait, or, or that like three hour gap where you're just sort of twiddling your thumbs. Yeah. Like, the yeah. People are like, what's it like? What's it like? Back, backstage, you're just like, ah, sat on a sat on a dirty couch and uh, and yeah. got, got a takeaway that I feel might, might have given me the shits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good good times, man. Good times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sat, around, sat around four cans of Carlin and a, and a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is actually the rider we got once yeah. when we played the bar flying Cardiff. No way. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Literally. I, I hope things have improved now. I hope you're in a you know, like you you seem you seem like you're in a real good space, man. Like in and you know, a little bit Yeah, like, well you should healthy. see our rider. There's all right. sorts on it. Like good. Yeah. Good. Holograms. <laughs> uh bath salts of every kind. <laughs> Badass, um, man. Good. Yeah. Good, good. A good lager to, from every city. There you go. Good, good to know, man. Good to know. I, I mean, do we're, well we're, we're so low maintenance. So I kind of feel like we need to put some weird shit in our rider because we're just like, we're just like water, crisps, beers, cans of Diet Coke. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like really, um, it's very yeah. normal. But I remember, uh, do you remember the band Frankie and the Heartstrings? Yeah. Yeah. I remember them. Yeah. Um, like Sunderland based band. So yeah, New- I thought it was they, yeah uh, Newcastle or Sunderland. Yeah, nice. Yeah, or, yeah. Don't say Newcastle if they're from Sunderland. No, that's a bad, no. bad yeah. move. Yeah. Um, but they had on their rider they had a a shrine to David Hasselhoff. Incredible. As part of their rider, never got it because it's just t- so daft. And but they turned up to um a festival or like a gig in Germany once. And there was a poster of the half on the wall with a candle underneath it. Amazing. So it's like, that's why you need to put that shit on there, just for yeah. that one chance. There you go. Yeah. I know um, benefits, like, uh, they uh, they have um, Kingsley asked for the vocalist, asked for a, a doll or a present for his daughter to take home for everybody. And I quite like that. Oh, so man, like, I every, need to do that. Yeah. So every venue, 
He's right. He's right. They have like they have waters and stuff like that, and then they have a gift for my daughter. So that every venue, so that they he gets a gift. Like what? it could be a doll, anything like that. So that he takes takes gifts from every city he goes into. And I I, I thought that was lovely when I when I heard that because I we booked him for the Adelphi. I'm doing once. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There I've, you go. I've got a little. I've got a little boy. Oh, nice one. So I need to do it for him. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's not a bad. Not a bad idea. Um. Dude, I could talk to you for ages. A couple, couple more questions, man. Um, obviously, you know, I, I think pulled apart by horses. You have this, this following. People really, you know, again, you're a band's band. Bands love you. People love you. People appreciate the shows. That visceral energy we talked about earlier. Yeah. What, what is your, what is your message then to, to those people that have got behind you from the very beginnings? You know, supported you through the through those highs and, and some of the some of the lows and, and things like that. What is your message for those people that are that, are, that have been behind the band for, for all this time and have stuck with you? Do you know what I mean? Wherever they've been, because again, you've been around the world, man. Like, uh, you know, what what are your thoughts and and, and and a message to impart on on those people that have got behind you? I think it's just the fact that it's like a two way thing. Mm. You know, it, it it's that thing where it's like we respect and need those people for the band to continue. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like people come up to me and they thank me and they're like, Oh man, your new album's amazing or like thanks so much for tonight. Like you totally yeah. like made made my week or I've been looking forward to it for so long. But then just like just the fact that we really respect them coming out or like just putting their their life to one side for like an evening to like come and yeah, hang man. out and get sweaty with us guys like it's it's dead important and yeah. we're always really appreciate appreciative of that like and seeing some of the same faces like you, you know we've got so many fans that aren't really fans they're friends like do you yeah. know what i mean it's like it's sort of it's like a weird little fucked up family like you, you go from like you'll be like oh we're playing we play you know we're playing liverpool tonight so we might see a couple of these guys knocking about or whatever like it's great it's kind of yeah. we need we need them as much as they need us sort of thing it's yeah yeah man. two-way thing going yeah, it sounds like you do it for the, you're doing it for the love. You're not necessarily doing it for the, you know. I mean, we talked about it earlier, but like again, a lot of people might look at pulled apart by horses and go, they've got loads of streams and they've got all this, you know, success. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's like not me- measurable, though, is it? It's like, well, oh, well, you can me- you can measure it in like a million different ways. Yeah, but yeah. but the fact that like I meet so many bands or or like you know when we've got local support or whatever. So there's so many bands that come up to us and they're like, oh man, we first saw you guys and then we wanted to form a band. And like, yeah, dude. To me, that's success because you're like carrying on the family tree of like fucked up, noisy music. Yeah. It's, you're kind of like inspiring and going, like, do you know what I mean? If you did a family tree, you'd see stuff like branching out and yeah, other bands sort of connected from what you're doing. Yeah. Which is cool. It is, man. It is. I think there's a question to come from that, and and, and a, a couple more. Um, the the idea of legacy, then, because again, you you you've seen the highs of the industry, and you've seen the, the you know you, you again you've done the the sweaty venues and the and the, and the, the takeaways and all that. You know, do you, do you give much still of the thought? Doing that. Yeah, still, yeah, exactly, still doing it. But that's that's it. It's like, do you give much attention and thought to the legacy of 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 pulled apart by horses? And I guess. Tom, as I guess as a as an extension of that your legacy, I, don't, I know it sounds a little bit pretentious, and that's not what I mean. I'm not trying to sound, but do you, do you think about the legacy of pulled apart by horses, and I guess your legacy as a musician, or does it not really come into your thought process too often? You know that the impact yeah. that you have on young bands, on on and on, you know the wider musical community in in Yorkshire and beyond. I suppose. I mean, it didn't early on because we didn't know what we were doing, and it was early days. But I think yeah. like as it's gone on kind of just seen more and more that's been like that's sort of like come off from the band or bit like been yeah. reflected in it and um i guess in terms of legacy like that's the thing about like 
I attach like memories to like our al specific albums and festivals that we've played and it all like merges together. So like, you know, I'll, I'll just like see, we'll, we'll like start playing a song that we haven't played for ages off like the first album or whatever. And it'll just like m different memories will come flooding back from it and stuff. And, um, that's what I really like about it. And the fact that like you're leaving something behind, like, Yeah. It doesn't matter if uh, what I think anymore about particular songs or what we did with this album. It's it's there. It's not yours anymore. It's in the world. It's Mm. like out there. And and when I die, like they'll still be there. The music's Yeah. still out there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do, man. I do. I I like that. Yeah. It'll I mean. outlive us. It'll it, and I guess in terms of like um, when you're saying about different members. member changes and stuff it's that sort of thing where it's like the band is bigger than us really Yeah. Yeah. um it's it's its own entity isn't it that's Yeah. 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 It doing is. stuff It is. It is, man. And I think it's just, it's real cool to hear your thoughts on that. And I, and I think I, I do want to squeeze or also one. we are, we are just i sound very philo philosophical about all this but we are still just a bunch of dickheads making a load of noise <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's yeah that's good though. That's the best. That's the best bit, man. I think that's that's awesome, and I think that you know, because I, I, a lot of the work I do as part of my day job is working with young people, and, and I think they have this Yeah. again. They have this vision of 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 what it's like being in a band, and and, and again, you you've done was it two thousand ten the first record self titled? Yeah. You know, it's it's a long it's a long time. So if I was to ask you straight up, and you've answered it briefly, but why do you still do it? Why do you still do it? You know, the, the sweaty venues, the backs, like the, the, you know, why, why, if I straight up, I know you can't speak for the rest of the band, but like, Tom, why is it you still do it? I guess it's it's the it's the connection with other people uh, Yeah. on like a different level. It's the cathartic performance side of stuff, but then Yeah. the creativity of like then burrowing away and thinking of what to do next and writing the next tunes and like us guys in our practice space like getting quite insular and figuring out stuff together, like. to then go and show show the world show everyone what we've come up with Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's cool. um yeah and it's and like um as a person i'm quite shy Mm. so like w like whenever i'm on stage it's basically like the inner weirdo that i sort of suppress sometimes can I feel like I can do whatever the fuck I want for that hour and then like like I said before, leave it on the stage and just carry on being Yeah, a dopey shy idiot. <laughs> that's... <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think a lot of people can. That's why I asked you the question because I think a lot of people can relate to that. You know what I mean? Like a lot of young people. Yeah, oh totally. I mean most people that come to our shows of like you can tell are like the yeah, a similar sort of minded similar sort of mind or like you know the the interplay between extrovert introvert like Yeah. you you can be in a mosh pit and you can be screaming your head off and whatever and then like as soon as you go outside you sort of got your head down a bit and you're like oh god i don't know anyone or Yeah, like yeah, I know do you what know you what mean i mean i know exactly mate i know exactly what you mean i think that's you know it's fair it's one of the things that drew me to you guys first off was that was that again while i was watching you guys nothing else really mattered do you know what i mean that, that chaos and that and it wasn't a dangerous show it was just it was just like you guys were just you were it looked like you could tear the stage down you know what i mean while you were on Yeah. stage but then when i saw you guys off stage you guys were just sound sound dudes and i and i love that it's the diversity The, the the Yeah. being uh, you know I, I guess the performer and the 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 person it's two different things I think it's it's perfectly encapsulated and pulled apart by horses man you know what I mean Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And I think like I've met I've knocked around with a lot of bands that have been like hard work or like you can see like chips on their shoulders a little bit yeah. and do you know what i mean and I, i've just been like i don't want to i don't want someone to be like oh he's a fucking novid or Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I just want to keep it real and like, 
save it for the stage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Bit, I get that. Yeah, everyone shits. Yeah. We're, yeah, there you go. We're all human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah, good point, Tom. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we'll finish it off then. I know you, sh- uh, you mentioned you're shy, so I feel like I'm putting you on the spot, but do you have anything else that you feel like we've missed? Oh, no, no, it's no, it's. Sorry, right, well, don't worry about it. It's it's lovely chatting to you. It's been uh, man, ages, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a long time. But like that's it. You know, have you got anything that you feel like I might have missed or anything you want to plug? Um, you know, anything like again, this is why I say put you on the spot. Is there anything you want to plug that we've missed or anything else you want to promote that you're doing uh inside the band, outside of the band that you feel like people should know? Um, about? Well, buy buy the fucking record is a massive thing because yeah. it's taken us a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to sort of come out the other end of it yeah um so yeah get the get the new album on preferably on record because we've hand screen printed them ourselves nice so literally sweat went into it well tommy the drummer put a lot of sweat into it while me and rob stood by the side passing him paper (laughs) (laughs) and and chewing his ear off but um yeah, that and come and see us at a show because, like, you know, uh, live music needs to be supported more than ever at the moment. It's pretty fucking, you know, up in the air. And I know, I know, like, um, money's quite tight at the moment and stuff, but also people need a release after, like, the past couple of years. So, yeah, yeah, need yeah. to need to get it out of your system. Get out, yeah. Get that, get that, get that catharsis out there. Yeah, absolutely, man. Nice yeah, one. Yeah, big time. Tom, thank you so much for your time today, man. Good to see you. Nah, as well. Ace chatting to you.